In this video, I'm going to talk through exactly what goes through my mind in a live weekend league gameplay of Madden 21. What's up guys, my name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player they can become. And if you're looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date on the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now in this video, as I said, I'm going to be running the uh, best offense and the best defense, I believe, in the game right now. And that is the nickel um, 335 wide defense from the 4-6 playbook. This is my favorite defense in the entire game. It's just I just think it's very simple, but it's also very, very effective at the same time. And so it's just a, it's just a, a beast of a defense. If you want to get the exact defense that I'm running, you can get that entire defensive guide in the description of this video. Uh, and you can get that for just 15 bucks down below. Now, uh, starting out here, you're going to notice that my opponent's going to do a lot of, looks like, it appears like he's going to do a lot of rolling out, a lot of corner routes. So we're going to go with this little baseline approach. It's one of my favorite little tactics here. Um, and going up top, over the top, right off the rip, and he does have a cover three bomb. I'm not quite sure, honestly, if he's running bunch offset, I'm just kind of surprised. I don't, I don't remember a bunch offset in the game having that play, so I'm surprised he's able to get that out there. But looks like he does have some cover three reads. So we're going to have to kind of, looks like he does know what he's doing. So we're going to have to shift to maybe our cover four defense to shut this down. Uh, it should be a fun matchup if he's already starting out with a nice little cover three bomb over the top. And I will tell you that that cover three bomb, honestly, at this point in the season, is one of the most effective things because out of the bunch set, and we talk about that all the time in our bunch ebook. But the reason that cover three beater is so, so important is because. A lot of people run Mike Blitz 3 because Mike Blitz 3 is probably the best defense in the game. And so it, it does uh, force, at least force me to have to begin to kind of adjust to that. So uh, good to, good job by him. Now we do have some adjustments and we will, uh, I just wanted to kind of see and test, is he going to go to that or not? And obviously right there, it did look like he obviously is. So we're going to have to work through that a little bit. But I'm running the trip side in on offense. If you want to get my entire offense, um, you can get that in the description of this video for just 10 bucks. The entire offense is broken down uh, in detail. But this is, I've been running this for a while. Uh, this is this is kind of one of my favorite little uh, uh, offensive schemes here. Had a little trouble with the motion here. And it does look like he's going to run some man. Nice little dot right there, little playmaker dot to Reggie Bush. That's like the best one yard throw I've ever had. Um, so he's showing man-to-man -man coverage. So when someone shows man-to-man -man coverage a lot, I like to go to this uh, this setup out of the curl flat play. Uh, I think it's just a real simple, really, really simple little setup here. We're going to use an option route. But really what we're looking for is, is he pressing? You see that he's not pressing. When he doesn't press, um, Brandon Ayuk is typically going to get pretty good separation, uh, just as long as he doesn't get jammed off the top. And the beauty of that is we've got the fade on the left side if they do press us. So we'll just have to see how, how much man coverage does he want to run. If he wants to run man for the majority of the game, um, that's fine with me, honestly. Um, so here, same same exact setup from curl flat, really just looking to see, you know, do we get this this nice little option route? And right there, that's, a, that's one of the most frustrating things I find with, um, the, the most frustrating thing about Brett Favre, like the only thing that I just don't like is sometimes he just randomly has stuff like that happen where he'll like low ball and it'll because it comes out of his hand so low it'll it'll just hit the defense or hit the lineman like right in the face um like it did right there so honestly we're gonna go to the same setup it doesn't look like he's gonna do anything but just run cover two man all game so um we're actually gonna just run we're gonna leave the angle route though this time and here we're just gonna take that quick check down just easy, get the chains moving. Uh, that's all we're thinking right there. And I'm just gonna see how long he stays in man coverage. Uh, we've got a lot of different ways that we can beat man over the top, but as you see right here, it, it, he's already showing that it looks like he's shifting to cover three. So, uh, you know, he was like, okay, I'm gonna test and see if you can beat man. Now that I know you can beat man, I'm gonna shift. So watch this square receiver. This is my favorite dot for cover three. Like right now, this is quickly becoming my favorite play in the entire game, actually. And it's cool because it's a universal, it's just hot routes. It's just hot routes from the, um, it's just hot routes from the offense, which I really, really like about it. So you know, we're gonna be able to just easily work up and down the field a little bit here. If he's gonna stay in this defense, uh, we should have a decent, uh, decent opportunity to be able to work a little bit here. 
So you see how he just runs away from the out route and the out route is wide open. It's a very consistent read out of trips tight end. It's one of the, I think, one of the most important routes to master because it forces them to have to do different things for that solo side. So as you see right here, he's gonna go back to man-to-man -to -man coverage. Um, what we're gonna actually do on this play is we're gonna go to a little bit of a beater. Um, if I can get the motion off, I don't know why I can't motion here. But little beater right here off the right and just kind of watching where his guys are. And as you can see, that nice little S post over the top, easy dot over the top against that man coverage. Uh, he, that's what we're talking about. We have those reads. If he does run a traditional cover two, we can hit him over the top with that. Uh, here gonna run the quick base, quickly becoming, um, the quick base is quickly becoming one of the better running plays in the entire game, just because it's very, very uh, consistent. That's, that's one thing, it's very consistent. It's also attached to the trips tight end. So it's got really good routes to complement it. Um, that's why the New England Patriots playbook, in my opinion, is the best playbook in the game because it has it has a plethora of things, right? It doesn't just have trips tight end. It has split close. It has all these other options that you can go to. But what I will also say about it is it's really hard to stop that run with your user. It's it's not something that, it's, it's really not shootable um, from the from the nickel three through five wide and that's what makes it so powerful. So. Um, we're going to try it again here with Bo Jackson. Uh, another thing, little quick tip with it, if you ID the nose tackle, you actually will typically get pretty decent blocking. And we're going to walk right in with Bo and get a touchdown. So we've got a nice little start off. I mean, honestly, um, not too frustrated with the defense. I was honestly kind of leaving myself a little vulnerable to that. I kind of knew that. Um, the beauty of Bunch is Bunch is, just, Bunch is just tough, man. It's the reason why it's been probably one of the best, if not the best offense in the entire game for years is because it has ways to deal with a meta. And um, so we're gonna have to shift, we're gonna have to try some different things out, maybe some man coverage. Uh, we, we'll, we'll probably actually come out in this next drive and run a little bit of man coverage, just to kinda, um, you know, just to kinda see how it works. You know, man coverage actually does pretty good against bunch, especially if you have a middle third and a cloud, uh, and a cloud flat on the bunch side, and then maybe like a little purple or a little yellow zone over the middle, or like a motion slant or something like that, or like the playmaker. That, those are some ways that you can deal with that. So we can run some, we can run match coverage, we can run man coverage. There's a lot of different options that we have. Um, so we'll see what we come up with here. I typically don't like to run man if I don't have to. Uh, I just find that I'd rather be in zone coverage because I have a better opportunity to pick them off. So we're gonna go to our, our cover three um, match defense here. And we've got our man coverage. And I messed up on my adjustments here. So I might get dotted. Yep, that's that's exactly what I was trying to not give up. And we got lucky, we got a little catch tackle. That's exactly what I was trying to not give up. I have found that I really, really like, and when I'm defending Gun Bunch, um, again, there's, there's a million and one uh, different strategies to defend this. Uh, but one of the other things that I really, I didn't talk about a ton, uh, is how much I really like defending Gun Bunch, just like this defense right here. So base aligned on the outside, that base line will do a really good job. We've got everything on the bunch side bagged except for like a rollout. So you're gonna see here, I'm just gonna kind of try to prevent the rollout with a little user rush, force him to stay in the pocket. And I'm like really close to getting an interception with that play. Like I, that's just a little thing. Because a lot of people that run bunch, they're gonna to try to be getting out of the pocket. They're gonna to try to get out there and, 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 and basically just kind of try to throw rollout corners uh, is really the offense. If you actually think about what's effective in bunch at this point in the year, that's the biggest thing that you're going to have to watch out for. So uh, here, I'm going to let him kind of do that. I'm just going to work this backside dig here. Uh, and he's going to run right into David Clowney. And over time, that's going to be a hit stick fumble uh, if he continues to do that all game. So we're not feeling too bad on the second drive. Uh, we've been able to uh, kind of get him in a little bit of a bad, you know, bad situation. He's not doing the best right now. We are going to shift to this three red cook. This three red cook will do a really good job if there's no hitches on the field or something like that. Then it will actually do a really good job against these little outs, little crossers. And now you see, now we've got a good look here. And he's going to get a little bit of a garbage time route, you know, a little route bounce. So we're okay with that. I'm, I'll am i live with that because he's not going to get that all game. Uh, I'll live with that. He's not going to get that all game. He's going to get that once every now and then. But you know what? I mean, we're also going to get some sheds. It's going to lead to some interceptions. So you see that he's kind of having to, to kind of fight uh, and do a lot more than what he had to do on his first play uh, or his first uh, first drive. 
So right here we got our setup in. I'm gonna drop that into a three rec here. Just really looking to work this middle. Good. Just kind of checking these little backside things. Keep them in the pocket. And let's see if he's gonna work. He's gonna work a little bit. We're gonna send the spy. And he almost threw us. He was about to throw it. Then I know he's about to throw it. But you see, I mean, that's just a disciplined defense does that. Um, discipline, discipline, discipline. So another thing that I actually really like, and this, but you have to really understand like where they can hit you. And you're gonna see I'm gonna go to it right here. Is I'm actually gonna go to this setup right here. This is really good, but I gotta watch if there's anything over the middle. I have to go get it. So like that route right there, I gotta go get. These little drags are like, okay, that's a good check down, good read, but that's not like a great, you see what I'm saying? Like we've kept everything in front of us like we're supposed to. So I'm trying to think of how I wanna attack him on this next play. And I think what we're gonna do um, is actually, we're just gonna blitz out of a cover zero. So we're gonna send some pressure here. And we'll see if he does protect Max Pro or what's he doing. Um, I knew that was coming there. And there's the fumble. There's the fumble. And there's a big play for the offense. That's what I'm talking about. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. We're not trying to get it. I mean, again, I want to say this right off the rip. It's not necessarily essential that we get a touchdown on this drive. We want to get a field goal and then get the ball back. That's We want to guarantee ourselves a field goal. So you're going to see, like, I'm going to go down. I'm going to test his run defense a little bit. And just kind of see, you know, how he's how does he do against the power O? Uh, he's in a really good run defense. He actually is in a really really good run defense from um, from I think the nickel normal. So you'll see. I mean, I'm gonna I'm just gonna test him and kind of see. I, I guess he's in big nickel, but right here, a little stop and go. Got to the outside. Bo Jackson up in the open field. A um, little stop again, and that's that's huge. So now we've got a red zone trip. We're gonna be able to take away a majority of his timeouts. Um, and we're going to be able to at least guarantee that we're going to get three points. That's the biggest thing, that we guarantee that we are going to get three points. Now, right here, you're actually going to see that I'm going to go ahead and just honestly rock fullback dive. The reason why is because I don't necessarily need a touchdown, and I just need to make sure that I take his timeout. So if I don't get the touchdown, that's okay, but I'm going to really try to fight to take away his timeouts, or I'm just going to take all the clock with me. So this little bit of clock management uh, but this is a little bitty thing that's going to make a big difference in the big picture of things. We've got a huge turnover on the defensive side, and now we have to force him to have to pay. So as you'll see here, we're going right back down to fullback dive, and we're not doing anything too complicated. But what I like to do is I'm going to double team, kind of ID that side that I want to run to. And then as you see here, Derrick Henry's going to fight in a little bit. Now you see him call timeout. It's actually probably a good move by him. In all honesty, uh, for the way that he handled it, did a good job. We took some clock as well, and now we're going to shift into a third and goal situation where, again, it's likely that we're going to take a timeout. We might get a touchdown here. If we get a touchdown, that's, like, awesome. If we don't get a touchdown, it's not that big of a deal. So you see that he's coming out in 3-3-5 wide. This is pretty much automatic fullback dive. 3-3-5 uh, wide is not necessarily the way that you want to attack uh, if you're trying to stop three, three or if you're trying to stop fullback dive. So as you see him kind of move here. And we're going to do this little motion snap little trick here. And as you see there, Derrick Henry into the end zone for a touchdown. And that's huge. Absolutely huge. Because now what we've done is we've gone up by seven points, which is one, po one full possession. We're going to go into halftime. And I always tell you this every single Inside the Mind gameplay tutorial where when you're going in, if you, if you can, you want to always kick the ball. You want to always have that set. So if you win the coin toss, you're kicking the ball. I kicked the ball off first. I went on defense first. He got me in a one-play bomb, and then since then, defense has been containing majority of what he's gotten. He's gotten one lucky route bounce. Other than that, we've been containing him, and uh, as you can see, now we're going to go into a situation where we're going to get the ball out of half and have the opportunity to go by two possessions heading into the crunch time of the game. That's why it's so, so, so important to be um, kicking the ball off if given that opportunity. So right here, just checking my coaching adjustments. You always want to do that. Make sure that you're not on ball carry conservative when you're on offense because if you get an interception, you want to be able to return it, obviously. And it looks like my opponent is going to stay with uh, this gun bunch offense. So we're going to stay with our defense. Got a little bit lackluster setup side, but you'll see here, shift in this direction. We're actually going to start over here. 
and really jump at that line that running back route if it's there there good and now we're gonna send him and he threw man he threw into three people and somehow completed it that's that's actually a really big completion for him now to help with that middle coverage a little bit we're actually gonna go to this setup um, Little, little Mike Blitz three with a deep half. We've got that night. Keep him in bounce. That's huge. And so now we've come into a four-second situation. Again, winning these little micro situations are super, super important. So you're going to see right here, uh, we're going to go to this defense with a QB spy. And we're really, we're shading over top. Basically, any post route. I'm, my job is deep middle. That's my job. And as you can see, it's going to force a check down, and we're going to go into half. See, he's he, this guy's a good bunch player. He may not be a great bunch player, but he's a good bunch player. He's eight of nine for buck seventy-one. He's playing solid offense. But that big stop with that Mike Woods zero, little quick heavy pressure setup. Um, after we've gone coverage, 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 I'll probably blitz. Like this is where I'm at in Madden twenty-one. If I blitz, I'm going to blitz maybe twice a game, uh, two to three times at very critical points. You'll see me send pressure. Other than that. You're going to see a lot of coverage defense at this point in the year. It's just best best way to play with block sheds. Having You have 99 guys going up against these linemen that are going to be able to get really good sheds. And so that's just the way I like to do it. So I'll send, um, you know, I, I won't send much, much pressure. Um, typically I'll rush three, two to three, maybe four at the most. Uh, and then we're going to basically play Bimba Don't Break. We're going to play a lot of Mabel. We're going to try to really force you to have to work towards our user. Um, we'll play a little bit of match from time to time. I do like to run match depending on uh, what they're doing, what routes are they going to. So you've noticed that this guy's ran. Um, since we've gone to this, and that's a bad kick off the rip, but since we've gone to this, this new defense, you've noticed that he's ran a lot of dig routes, stuff over the middle, trying because we were kind of forcing that which is a good setup from him but um, anyways that's kind of how I like to play so now we've got the ball and if you notice is what I was talking about we've got eight minutes left in this ball game so a little bit of clock management if I get a field goal I go up by two possessions if I get a field goal I go up by two possessions that's huge that's huge now if I get a touchdown that's even better but First things first is get yourself in a position to get a field goal, but you also want to take some clock. So you see here, I'm going to quick base. I'm going to little simple things. This is another time where I really like to go to this RPO bubble. Um, that most of, I like to use this RPO bubble, you know, maybe three to five times a game. It's a really good play, especially when they start to get over aggressive with their user. So you'll notice he's probably a user on this right side guy. So you see right here, I'm just going to get this little bubble screen out there. They almost always miss that tackle, and you can almost always get up and get a couple easy, just cheap yards. That's just cheap yards is what that is, and that's going to put us in a really good position now to be able to just continue to work the ball up and down the field. Another little thing that you can do, you notice that this linebacker is kind of out, and you see that he's going to move him. Um, if he didn't move him, I could move my guy in motion to move him. Uh, if I wanted him out of my way. But as you can see right here, this base is really good. He's not really doing anything um, necessarily to try to stop it. And that tells me, like, that gives me a pretty good green light of like, okay, we're going to pound base a little bit. And you'll see we're going to take some clock too. You notice this clock's ticking. We've only got about six minutes left in this ball game. This is where I really like to just kind of get a little bit more conservative uh, and just take what the defense gives me, which is right now, is this base based off alignment? Is this open based on alignment? One of the big questions I ask whenever I go to the line of scrimmage. Now, this is a big third down right here. And honestly, this is four down territory because I'm a terrible special teamsman. I can't kick field goals to save my life. It's probably one of my biggest weaknesses in this game. And you'll see here, I'm just going to go to base right because i know it's four down territory i know if i don't get it i'm gonna go for this uh and so i don't get it and it's fourth and two and now you know this is a big 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 down in the game he's got an opportunity to be able to stop me i've got an opportunity to keep the chains moving it just all comes down to what defense is he is he gonna call you know we're gonna work some underneath passing concepts we're gonna really uh emphasize these quick little out routes just because and you see here this press coverage on the back so that changes things a little bit. So we're gonna go back to that first setup that we had that does a really good job. He's showing man coverage from the rip. So we'll just see if he's in man coverage or not. There's a timeout, didn't like the alignment. And um, at least we get him to burn a timeout. Things like that, little things like that go a long way in the big picture of the game. 
So here, curl flat. And yep, you see he's in this man coverage again. So this is showing man coverage from the rip. Um, so based on alignment, this corner route could be an option. It all depends on where his user's at. It all depends on where his user's at. Um, and we get a nice little beat press action. That's why we put that guy on a fade. Nine times out of 10, he's gonna burn him over the top if he presses and shades underneath. Right there, shade underneath. Why did he do that? Let me answer this question. This is a huge question to be asking yourself. Why would someone do that if they know that they can get beat by that? Here's why, two reasons. First one is super aggressive trying to stop us for a short, you know, we're trying to really get aggressive. But the bigger reason is because we've been hitting the hitches and the outs and the quick underneath stuff, and it's set up that major dot over the top. That's that's called um, scheming, that's called executing the little things that end up opening up the big things, and that was a huge, huge dot. That gives us a full two possession lead that he has to come back from within five minutes, uh, within about five and a half minutes. So very, very good position to be in right now. This is where the defense, this is where that contain, you know, kind of approach that we're taking to defense is going to really pay off. You'll notice it's going to be hard for him to just get routes. I mean, he's going to have to take underneath. It's, it's really what we're forcing him to have to do. And so, um, anyways, just big, big, big time uh, touchdown right there. All right, right here we're going to go to a little cover three Mabel, but this is uh, specific to a deep half. It's really good in case he's trying to hit that little clear out. As you see right there, he's got a route over there. So we're just going to continue to do our job, and he's going to force that into four people, and unfortunately we don't catch it. And that's the second time that he's done that. He's forced a route, and, uh, and luckily for him, uh, he hasn't had to uh, deal with anything from that, any fallout from that. But we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. That dig is open. He's probably going to take that good read by him. Pretty bad defense by me. One of the real reasons why we run this specific coverage the way we run it is to defend this a little bit better. So on this third down and one, there's a couple of key routes that um, are going to be open for my opponent. And so what we're going to do in this situation is we're going to go to this little setup right here. And I've really got to watch this underneath stuff. He's going to try to force over the top. Mike Evans with the pick. Unfortunately, doesn't stay in bounds. But there we go. Nice defense. And looks like he's going to come back up and bunch offset. So last time that we were in this situation, we um, last time we were in this situation, we went to this uh, defense right here. This time we're going to do this defense. And the reason why we're going to do this is because this is going to be a little bit better. So um, we've got this crossing route that we got to watch out for. We're actually going to throw in the flat out there and really try to just take these underneath, kind of force this. He's going to try to go over the top. We're just swatting user swat. Huge play by Sean Springs, and that was the shading. We shaded our coverage inside and over top to try to protect from that. He actually made a right read. I feel like that post route most of the time will get open, but didn't in that situation. So good game to this guy. If you want to get the exact offense and the exact defense that I ran in this game, you can get them both in the description of this video.